<laughs> we weren't actually going to record an episode today, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. We do have a little bit of time. If you're tuning in, today is episode four of the vlog. I should say three and a half, no, it's episode four. Episode four of the vlog. We weren't going to record anything. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, but we are doing a quick little piece, a quick little recap. If you guys know, you know that Tuesday we had our biggest launch to date in Do You Even's history. We broke every single record here at the brand. Basically surpassed our Black Friday sales in April, which is crazy to say. Obviously, we made a few um, changes to the brand. If you guys didn't see already, we got featured on Shopify's multi-currency blog. Since the inception of our multi-currency payment gateway on Shopify, we've been breaking record after record and the Hyperflex release combined with the Impact Seamless restock broke every single record number that we've ever produced here at Do Even. So that was incredible. I've got a meeting with Shopify this month, later this month, and we've got a meeting with Facebook as well. We are currently going through the verification process. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we can get a blue tick on the Do you Even page as well as myself. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see how that pans out. And I wanted to give you guys a quick update on my knee. For everyone that's been following along, you guys know that I'm eight and a half weeks post-op and I've been really vigilant with all my exercises. I've been doing my stationary exercise bike every single night. I've been keeping up with all my rehab exercises and I've been doing everything in my power to try and get better so that I could put myself in the best position possible to try and be a viable candidate for this transplant. But turns out everything that I was gunning for in terms of being a viable candidate for the transplant really doesn't matter. And what I mean by that is a viable candidate for a meniscal transplant is someone that hasn't had success with their rehab. So they've tried absolutely everything. The inflammation is still continuing. The pain is still continuing. And uh, it's sort of a last ditch effort of trying to get some sort of normality back in their life. It's a last resort, essentially. And for me, you know, I've been making the necessary gains in terms of getting full functionality. So if I were to go ahead with a surgery like this, I would be leading myself, um, yeah. Uh, yep, uh, sorry, if I were to have a meniscal transplant, I would basically regress in terms of all of my progress. I already knew that I didn't need the transplant. That's what I wanted to come to. So I was making all of this progress throughout my journey and I sort of just needed to hear it from the horse's mouth. I needed to hear it from the big guys just to give me that clarity, so to speak. And now I can just continue with progress and living my life and uh, making the most of it. So I'm excited to continue with my training. I've recently started, you know, boxing and I want to do grappling. I want to get back to running. I want to do soccer for one more season. I want to do a lot of things. I'm a very hyper physical type person. So I'm just going to concentrate on on living life now you know now that I've got the news don't need it not a viable candidate and I'm making extremely good progress I can live my life to the fullest and there's nothing to stress about I hope we covered everything meniscus is done it's done and dusted it's gone and it's gone 80% of it. <laughs> That's it. I don't really have any questions to answer, but I'll go to last week's questions. I'll bring them up and go over one of the ones that I didn't have time to answer and hopefully give you guys some value that you can take away from this episode. Because as I said, you know, I don't want it to just be a lifestyle vlog. Dan's waiting to walk. You know, he's, he's like, guys, I'm done. I, I finished work. Can I just leave now? <laughs> uh, yeah, sweet. Let's do that. We'll do it live. I didn't get to do a Q and A this week, but as you know, on Instagram, I constantly do um, Insta stories every single day. And if you've got a question that you want to ask, DM me. And if I'm doing a Q&A, just submit a question and we'll try and add it to one of our vlog topics or I'll answer it in the vlog. So this question comes from at Marco Hatting. <laughs> sorry, I butchered that name. Um, I'm so sorry. Anyway, he said, I'm living in a small, isolated, struggling economy. How does one start any viable business? So I'm assuming that you have an internet connection and you have a phone because you've DM'd me a question. So in today's day and age, that's all you need. You need an internet connection and some way, shape or form of communicating to the outside world, i.e. the internet, i.e. using a phone to access the internet. When I started out, Do Even Brand, the number one question for me was how does a broke uni student start a private label brand? That was the million dollar question. A few Google searches later and a ton of man hours and I was able to kick off a blog with very little overheads, just 
cost to maintain and run the website. And I partnered up with a drop shipping company that was willing to print order our merchandise. And that basically was the backbone of the website. So that was very cheap, very efficient, and allowed me to test the market with products and basically find out uh, what worked and what didn't. And I could actively replace designs, colorways, features at will. And it allowed me to refine my brand message and um, how effectively I communicated my marketing. So that was all done with a couple hundred dollars. So if you've got an internet connection in this day and age and you've got a tablet, phone, or some sort of... Uh, <laughs> computer, MacBook, whatever it may be, you can definitely make something of yourself, especially if you're hungry enough to find the solution because they're all out there. Timing is a big thing. Opportunity is a big thing as well, but you can create opportunity yourself. And what I'm telling this guy is that if you're living in a struggling economy, but you have the ability to contact me and you have an internet connection, then you have the ability to create opportunity. You have the ability to start a business. I started a business with a couple hundred dollars. Do you even started off as a blog? And my merchandise was actioned by a third party logistics center, essentially, Dropshipper, who was doing print to order items. And that allowed me to refine what our brand message was, that allowed me to refine what the market wanted from us, and then eventually go on to do private label branding. But it was all baby steps. And if you've got the tenacity to want to do something and change your circumstance, you definitely can. In this day and age, I definitely believe you can. Be consistent. I think that's the most important thing. So when you're starting out, don't expect immediate results. Everyone wants the immediacy of having these idealistic goals eventuate, but all of that takes time. There you are. Those brilliant reverse signals, yes! Music to my ears, yeah. Or um, my singing. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. No, I'm not gonna do another piece. I'm not gonna serenade you, James. If you guys enjoyed episode four, I know it was sort of pieced together, really rushed, but we wanted to get the content out to you guys. We promised weekly vlogs, so we're delivering every single time. If you guys like what you saw, give us a thumbs up, give us a heart, subscribe, you know what to do. Um, leave us some feedback as well. What do you guys enjoy from these vlogs? You know, is, it the, is there value that you're seeing from the vlogs? Can I do something different that gives you guys additional value? Or do you like more of the lifestyle-y, entertaining stuff? Let us know. <laughs> yes! I tell you what run this, I'm done with excuses. Get me for a minute, trying to get what I've been giving out. Do it for the tickets, I don't listen to the critics, I'ma push him to the limit.